Morning, folks. Today, like I said before I started recording, moving on to 3.7. The last new material before your mid-unit 3 test. Today, we'll be doing the non-calculator word problems. Tomorrow, we'll focus on the calculator stuff because your calculator can do sinusoidal regression. But we'll save all that for tomorrow. So nice, quick, easy lesson today. And it is pretty easy, too, because we've already done a whole lot of writing equations from pictures. I mean, I, we don't have to have any words at all. I could say, like, hey, let's find an equation for this. And I feel like you guys could do it. I really do think that we're pretty good at that by now. <clears throat> so what is this thing showing us? Uh, the figure at the right shows the depth of water along a seawall. So this dotted line must be our seawall. The depth is 5 feet at low tide and 11 feet at high tide. On a given day, low tide occurs at 6 a.m. So we can see that this is 6 a.m. And high tide happens at noon. So then what is x equals 0? Well, it's... It says the number of hours after midnight, so x equals zero is clearly midnight. Think of this as military time. So 15 would be 3 p.m. Cool? All right. If D, depth, is re if D represents the depth of the water, T, hours after midnight, we can use a cosine function in this format to model the depth of our water. We're just going to figure out what A, B, and D all equal in this scenario, A is going to be our amplitude. So what is our amplitude? Yep. She said it with a question mark, but yes, the amplitude is three. Now here's my question for you. Is it going to be a positive three or a negative three based on the image? Positive three, because this is a positive cosine wave. Since it begins at a maximum on the y-axis, we're looking at a positive cosine wave. And I'll write it in blue since it is water. The depth is 3 cosine of... We'll figure out B in a second. What value will the letter D have to be? It's 8. Because D is always going to be your midline. It's your vertical shift. Because remember... Our sine and cosine waves, our sinusoidals, are supposed to be centered around the x-axis. So this thing has clearly been shifted up 8, so we have a plus 8 going on. Now, just like we talked about on Friday and probably the times before that, the hardest part about this is going to be deciding what B equals. Now, we can see that the next time we reached a high tide was at noon. That means the period length is 12. Well, the period is supposed to be 2 pi over b. So period 2 pi over b, we know 2 pi over b equals 12. So if you multiply both sides by b, you will get that 2 pi equals 12b. And divide both sides by 12. That reduces to pi over 6. So your b value is pi over 6. There it is. I think that was the hardest part. Use your model to find the intervals of time where the tide is rising. <clears throat> Real words. When the tide is rising, what are we looking for on here? Increasing. So we just need to see the zones of increasing on this guy. And when do we start increasing? At 6. Yep, 6 to 12, and where else? 18 to 24 will do it. Whoa, 18 to 24. I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be, what my brain was doing there. There we go. That's it. Woohoo! This is easy. We've done a lot of hard work to make these word problems easy. Questions, comments, concerns about the tide thing here? No? Not too bad? Okay. Boop. 
for this question, we're going to have to suspend reality a little bit. It says the height above the ground of a yo-yo can be modeled by this equation, where h represents the height of the yo-yo in feet above the ground, and t represents the time in seconds since the yo-yo was first dropped from a maximum height. Okay. When does the yo-yo re return to the maximum height for the first time? What's it asking me to find? The period length. That's what we need to know. Because we know it starts at a maximum, and it's a positive cosine. So to say that it's going to return to its maximum, we just need to know how long this period is. And period is supposed to be 2 pi over b. Our b value is pi. That's two seconds. I don't know about you guys, but every time I've ever played with a yo-yo, the yo-yo was taking fractions of a second to go up or to go down and then back up. It can't. You know, I thought the same thing. This really, really long, but the amplitude's only 1.5, which means the string is only 1.5 feet long. So you know how slow this yo-yo falls? It goes down 1.5 feet per second. That's slower than gravity. That's so much slower than gravity. That's like yo-yoing on the moon, maybe. Maybe that's what we're doing here. It didn't say anywhere on here that we were on planet Earth. So we're yo-yoing on the moon, folks. <laughs> it says find the maximum and minimum heights. How can I do that without having to graph it? So if we subtract the amplitude from the midline, that's down. And if we add, that's up. So our maximum height, well, actually, yeah, above the ground. The maximum height is 2.25 plus 1.5. So that's the midline plus the amplitude of 3.75 feet. Remember, AP is going to expect you to use units. And the minimum value will be the midline minus the amplitude. Technically, the absolute value of the amplitude because we didn't care if it was positive or negative. And that's 0 0.75 feet. There it is. So easy. We're good at this. Questions, comments, concerns on example number two. It's too easy, isn't it? Too easy. Too easy. So we could try to throw a monkey wrench in it by introducing simple harmonic motion, which is, I guess, a physics thing. Um, but let me tell you what simple harmonic motion is. It's sinusoidal. And you could either use a sine or a cosine model. What makes it harmonic is that there are no shifting. There's no horizontal shifting, there's no vertical shifting, and D stands for displacement. So it's all about how far up or down, or how far left or right you went from the center of the system. And rather than saying 2 pi over B with a B in front of our variable, this fancy looking W is lowercase omega. I actually had to look that up because I didn't know what letter that was. That's omega, okay? But nothing is different. The period length is going to be 2 pi over omega, and the frequency is going to be omega over 2 pi. That's it. Nothing is different other than what we're calling that letter. It's that easy. You guys cool with that? One person said, mm-hmm. I hope that means everybody's cool with it. A point on the tip of a tuning fork vibrates in harmonic motion described by this equation, 12 sine of omega t, where omega for a tuning fork, or excuse me, find omega for a tuning fork that has a frequency of 386 vibrations per second, and our answer is going to be in pi radians. What that means is there'll be a pi in our equation. That's what it means. It means don't type pi on a calculator. This is frequency, though. Frequency is the reciprocal of the period length. So what we know is 
is that the period length is the reciprocal of 386, or 1 over 386. We know that the period length is 2 pi over what would have been b, but is now omega. What? Anyway, she's giggling about something. Anyway, we are going to cross multiply. And what you get is omega is 2 times 386, which, if I remember correctly, is 772 pi. So to say answer in pi radians, that's what that means. That means you'd better have a pi in your results. Easy enough? Ta-da! Very easy. Bless you. Next. A ball on a spring. Oh, crap. All right, let's go ahead and draw this. So... There we go. Ball on a spring. It is pulled six inches below its resting position. So this is resting. And since it's harmonic, we know that's going to be at zero. So we're talking about displacement from resting position. We're either above or below resting. And we say pulled six inches below. So I can come down to negative six, which means I can oscillate back up to positive six. Oh, well, what's amplitude? Yeah, amplitude is six. Midline is zero. So amplitude is six, but we know midline is zero because we're talking about harmonic, because uh, it says harmonic motion. So we've got an amplitude of six. Okay, cool, cool. Amplitude of six. And we know that the period is 4 seconds. 2 pi over omega is 4. So multiply both sides by omega. And then divide both sides by 4. Oh, pi over 2. And then we're going to write an equation. It specifically says that it is pulled six inches below and then released. So where does it begin at? Minimum, maximum, or midline? It says it's pulled six inches below. So this is going to be a minimum. Because what we're going to do is we're going to have our positive numbers be the above the middle. So when you pull it down to here, its displacement is negative six. So that'll be a minimum. No, this is, this is resting. And then we're going to pull it down six and release. Okay. So that means we have a picture that looks something like this. Whee! So what kind of model is this? Negative cosine. Displacement is negative amplitude cosine of omega t. Done. That easy. Next one is another mass oscillating on a string. A mass oscillating up and down on the bottom of a spring, uh, assuming perfect elasticity, no friction, air resistance, no loss to heat, anything like that, can be modeled as harmonic motion. If the weight is displaced a maximum of four centimeters, you know what, let's just go ahead and draw this thing. Let's see. Got ourselves a spring. Got ourselves a mass. We know that when it's at rest, its displacement is zero. We know that the displacement is a maximum of four. So we can go up four, and we can go down four. 
then what's the amplitude? Four. four. Yeah, amplitude is four. It says the cycle length is three seconds. That's the period. So we know that 2 pi over omega is 3. Multiply both sides by omega. And then divide both sides by 3. Assume it starts from rest. It didn't say that it, which way it starts going first. So we actually get to make that call. Do you guys want it to say, you want to say it starts from resting goes up or you want to say it starts from resting goes down? Somebody said down first and I feel like if it was at rest and then you let it go, I feel like gravity would take over and it would go down first. So I'm just going to make the assumption that we were holding it at rest and then released. So we'll make the assumption that it did this, which would look like what kind of wave? Negative sine, yep. Y, e, no, distance, displacement, excuse me. Displacement equals negative amplitude sine of omega t. Done. When I started doing a better job of drawing my omegas, there was less giggling. So it must have been the way I was drawing them. It was funny. Oh, it wasn't? It was just coincidental? It wasn't coincidental. So it was that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ferris wheel. See, Isabella, this is your question. Ferris wheel question. Here we go. A Ferris wheel is constructed such that a person gets onto the ride at its lowest point, duh, which happens to be five feet above the ground. Oh, all right. Well, let's look at our scale here. Our y-axis is counting by tens, actually, so five feet is here. And reaches its highest point at 125. Again, if we're counting by tens, 125 is here. Cool. Well, wait a minute. If we know the maximum and the minimum, what can we easily find? Midline. And where will we always find the midline? In the middle. And in mathematics, how do we find the middle between two numbers? Uh, average. Not, not difference. Sorry, add, add them. We find the average. So the midline is the average of the two numbers. So 5 plus 1, 2, 5 divided by 2. That's 130 over 2. 65 is your midline. There it is. We have our midline. Oh, which part of the equation is that? D, that one right there. We already know that number is 65. I'm just going to start filling in the equation, which is all the way down here at part D. No, part C. Write the equation. Yeah. Y equals something cosine. Um... And at the end, we have a plus 65. Now, it says that we get on at a minimum. Great. The amount of time it takes to complete one full rotation is equal to eight minutes. Well, that means that we're at the next time we're at the bottom is eight minutes. That's here. That's our period length. Halfway between two minimums, it's going to be a maximum. So at four seconds, we'll be up here at the number 125. And halfway between a minimum and a maximum, it's going to be a midline. So between zero and four seconds is two seconds. At two seconds, we'll be at the midline. And at six seconds, we'll be at the midline. And here we have a very tall cosine wave. However, is this positive cosine or negative cosine? Negative, negative cosine. 
And what is the amplitude? 60. From here to here is 60. So when we're writing our equation, since it's an upside down cosine wave, we're gonna put negative 60 in front. And since this thing starts on the y-axis like it should have, what is the value of the letter C? Zero. It has no phase shift. Now, if we wanted to write it as a sine model, then there would be a phase shift. And we could start it right here at two seconds. But because the minimum value is happening at the y-axis, we could say there's no phase shift and we're ready to rock and roll. If you wanted to write this as a positive cosine model, which might have actually been the intent, but since it never said that A had to be positive, we don't need to do that. But if we had to say A was positive, what would we see inside our parentheses? T and then what? Where, okay, if we were starting, if it was a positive cosine wave, what X value would we begin at? At four, because you'd have a maximum. And since it's a positive four, it would say T minus four, but it didn't dictate that. So I'm gonna say, call it a negative cosine wave and make your life easy. That's what I would do. All right, all we need now then is to figure out what the value of the letter B is. And we know the period length is eight. Multiply both sides by B. Divide by eight. Look how easy this is. We're good at this. Too good. Lastly, at what time is the rider 65 feet above the ground? Hmm? Two and six minutes, Adi says. He's right. Guess what, guys? I got a yellow pen. I'll use it sparingly, though, because it's kind of hard to see. Two minutes and six minutes. That's when you are 65 feet above the ground. Now, if this was a calculator question, I could ask you, like, when are you 60 feet above the ground? And what you would do is you would put on a graphing calculator, and you have a second line at y equals 60, and you do second trace intersect. I, yeah, you had to do it twice, so you can get both answers. But that's how it works. Guess what? I say we call it there. Because that's enough nerding for today.